Hello everyone, I'm Barbara from Fairies in My Pond and today I'm going to talk a little bit about ball jointed dolls and how I go about making them. Ball jointed dolls is something that I feel that I am really learning and there's just so many different ways and different things that you can do and I, I just really enjoy the whole process. In my last tutorial I explained about how I use candle wax for the core and I'm showing you what it is that I'm using in this tutorial so if some of you do not see that tutorial this is what I use and what I do is it's really important that when you do a ball jointed that you have some kind of a plan. Now I've drawn this out for myself. It's my own sketch but you can go on the internet and you can find a lot of templates. And basically what I do is I first draw out the doll. And this doll in particular turned out to be about nine and a half inches tall. Now as I draw the doll out, I go back in there and I start breaking it down into pieces. Now this is the way that I do it. Somebody else can um, might do it a different and might even be easier than the way that I do it. But it's just the way that I have basically have taught myself to do. And like I said, I am constantly changing all the time. So after I break it all down, then what I do is I go ahead and I draw in the center piece, which that is showing me where the wax core is going to be. I go ahead and I do my measurements. And the measurements is really basically to give me an idea of when I'm sculpting that I am in that type of measurement that I have on my template. You again it's something that you might not have to do it's just I don't know it just helps me out. Okay now the one thing that I want to show you is that many of you have been asking me how do I how do I slice the the candle wax? Well I, I'll be honest with you the candle wax is not an easy thing to cut at least not for me. So I have taken a wood burning tool and I have sketched a piece out and then I would get it so far down and then take a knife and then slice it. But what I did find is that I like to find things that I have laying around the house to come up with things to use and I did come up with this and these are the uh, candle wax uh, things that you melt and I had a container of it and I says they're each individual wax pieces of wax. Now this I'm not saying I'm using that wax I'm using the empty container as a mold and what I do is I melt my candle wax clear candle wax and then I pour it into each square let it dry pop one out and it turns out let me get one out and I'll show you it turns out that this one in particular was pretty close to the size of my core that I have drawn in but I also want to measure it with a thickness too now, if I'm too big, I'll show you, um, all I do is I take an X-Acto knife and I'll place it up to my template and I'll show you how really easy it is to cut. And I will go ahead and I will shape it to my core. You get the idea. Okay. The other thing that I want to show you is the head and the torso. I'm going to start off with the head. Now this is from my last tutorial and I'm going to be doing this over because there's there's a couple of things that I want to try. I want to try something different. But here's the thing that I want to really show you and it has to do with the eyes. And many of you are still emailing me and asking me about uh, these glass bead eyes. 
and what I'm going to do, and I have already got it started, is that these new beads that I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on that and I'll just show you the drilling part and the painting and what it looks like. Okay, these glass eyes, I want you to see this because I this is what I really strive for. And one eye turned out and one eye has a little bit of a gap, but it, I could still use it, but I want to show you what I try to go for. Okay, now this black around the eye here, um, just omit it because what it was was I was putting the eyeliner on and then I decided to take it off and thought, well, I need to show you the this part that I'm going to show you. Okay, now with the eye, what I really strive for is I strive for that glass bead to fit flush against the outside of that eye. This one came out perfect. Now this one here, I'm going to show you and I hope you can see it, there is a little bit of a gap. Is that a big problem? No, it's not because by the time I put the eyelashes on and everything, you're not even going to see it. But when I'm actually working with the eyes, this is what I go for. I don't want a real big gap. A little gap you can get away with. Okay, now when I was doing these eyes, um, they were, I did like a green color and I didn't really care for the color. It was like too faint. And I put the UV gel on it and everything and I just, you know, just set them aside. So I took them, I turned the bead around and I drilled out another hole and I thought, well, why waste it? So I went ahead and I put blue in. Now this is the thing that I want to share with you because I was kind of glad that I did do that. Because when I did my eyes and I set them in and put my epoxy, my two-part epoxy on it, what happened was my bead was a little bit too large. So what I did was I went ahead and I took my drill and I just made that flush and it turned out very well. You can even see the different color that I did have. But what happened was the bead was a little bit too large that when the ball of the neck goes up inside, it, the, it kept catching the, the bead. So I just went ahead and I just drilled it down. So if you ever have a glass bead eye that you kind of messed up on one side, you can turn it around and do it on the other side. And if you also have that problem to where you run into where the ball hits that the, the bead, you can always just um, drill that out. I had no problem with that whatsoever. So I was really glad that that happened. Okay, now for the top of the head, uh, this is the part that I'm going to, to kind of like work on. But what I want to do is I want this one here. I didn't get a clean enough cut. I like a real nice clean cut to where it just you can barely see that seam. Now what I'm going to do with this next one is that I'm going to see if I can't put some kind of like uh, an opening groove in there and then a groove up in here to where it'll actually sn like snap on. Okay, now the next thing, the neck. So let's go back down here with the drawing. In my last tutorial, remember when I said about this piece right here? Well, I always put that on, and I'm going to explain to you why I personally do that. Is because I would, in, with ball jointed, I would rather have too much clay, cook clay. I'm talking about cook clay, than not enough. Because if I have to add clay to it, I feel that it gives you a weak point with your doll. And ball jointed dolls, I don't want any weak areas, especially anywhere around where the joints are going to be. 
Now, if I did have to add clay, then what I would do is I would use my two-part epoxy and I would go ahead and reinforce that over the cooked polymer clay. Now, this piece here, okay, what that's going to do is that's going to determine how far back your head is going to be able to go. So if I'm going to use this um, demonstration here, and I'm going to place it over the neck. Okay, if I had that tail piece on there, it wouldn't be able to move back. So I would have to keep cutting that off until I get just the movement that I want. Now, for the front of the um, part of the head, if you move it down, it you know, depending on your doll, how you've sculpted it and everything, you might not have enough of a movement to move the head down. If you don't, you might have to make this part in here more narrow and then test it out and see how much movement that you do get. Sometimes you'll even have to shave off a little bit in this area, but you don't want to go too far because then you won't have your uh, underneath the, the jaw. But I wanted to really explain that part with the neck. Okay, torso. Okay. Okay. When I take my template, I'm going to take the bottom piece because these are not going to, I'm not going to be using, but I'm going to use them as a demonstration. Okay, this is the bottom part of the torso. And then this part up here is going to go up into the center of that top part of the torso. And when I do it, now see now how off this piece would be? I would want to make sure that I got all my clay up in here and down in here. And then I would place this. So in other words, I would sculpt the, the top torso first, then I would sculpt the bottom. I just, that is how I work. I work from the top torso to the bottom and the, always the top piece of the movable part. So if I was working on the arm, I would use, work on the top part of the arm and then the lower and then keep going that way. Top to bottom, that's just the way I do it. Okay, but I wanted to show you that and I think that covered that with the uh, template. Now I want to show you these uh, glass bead eyes that I found. Well, I shouldn't say eyes because they're not eyes yet, but I found these at Michael's and they did not have these before. Now, the other ones that I've shown you, there is absolutely really nothing wrong with that. The only thing that I really like about these is I like the, the color of white. And when I was looking at them, they made me think of a particular type of glass, and it was called milk glass. Well, I came home, and I put it on my computer and searched it, and I did find them. I found them in 8 millimeters, 10 millimeters, and this one is 12. But I want to find some a little bit smaller. I love the color. I love it. It's like um, it has depth to the to the color it's when you feel it and you have I don't have my other one but I've got one that I've started to drill out here it is I've started to drill it out and you see it's they're heavy and they make me think of marbles they're just I love them but I will be making a tutorial and I'm going to show you guys just how I do the glass and maybe that'll answer your, your questions if you, you see what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, now, the other thing I'm going to share with you is that 
what um, I picked up to use to try another color. And now these are cheap pens, but they're they're for glass. Now normally I use the Pebio, but I went ahead and I tried these because cheap isn't always a bad thing. But the only thing that I found with these is I didn't quite like the tip, but I made it work. Okay, they do go on glass. The other thing that I want to say here is that this technique that I'm sharing with all of you when I cook, when I sculpt my clay head, then I cook it. Then I keep doing whatever it is that I need to do, clean it, scrape it, um, sand it, I don't, I don't care what it is, okay? Until it is done, and I know that it's not going to go back in the oven anymore, then I go ahead and I take my eyes and I set them in. And I will put my two-part epoxy on it, and then my head will not go in the oven anymore. And I'm going to explain to you why I am really choosing to do this from now on. I will not be doing any solid heads anymore. I will not be doing any more sculpting dolls in the fashion of where I put that head back in the oven with the eyes. Reason is because I have ran into too many problems with color. Some colors would not do this and then some colors would. And it's every time you put it in the oven, it would change a little bit of that color of the eye. And when I test that color, I want that color that I am looking at and I'm saying I like. I don't want to have to put that piece back in the oven and then the heat changes the color. By making my, my doll heads hollow, it has saved me so much trouble and I've known about the wax for so long, I've used the wax for so long, but I kept going back doing a solid head. It was a habit. It was it was something that it was so familiar that I just did not want to stick with the wax. And now that I've done it, it's like the more you do it, the better it gets, the easier it gets, you understand it so much more. And then I ask the question to myself is why have I not done this a long time ago? Now, you can go ahead and you can make the rest of the doll solid if you want, but the, my doll heads will not be solid anymore. I have so many options of creating a doll head and not having to worry about the oven hurting those eyes. That is the one thing that I really wanted to share with all of you about that. So, if you're going to do this technique and you go and you stick it in your clay and you cook it, I don't know how these are going to hold up in the heat. You're going to have to try it, try it out yourself because you're not going to see me doing that anymore. Okay, now these pins here are called Craft Smart. And really use any kind of paint that you want to use as long as it goes on glass. I did put it on glass. It worked out great. I put the UV gel over it. It worked out great. Everything. Just a cheapo pen. Now, I do know that some pins you, pins you need to watch out, especially with the black, because you the black will sometimes bleed into the other if you're not using a pretty good black. I do find that, that the good black pens work a lot better than the cheap ones. Okay, everyone, I'm going to show you one other little thing, and I know many of you probably know about this, but this is for the ones that might not know about it. And I bought this for $3 at Harbor Freight, and I've always wanted one. And it's a handy hand tool. And it has these little alligator clamps. Now, this one in particular only had two, but that's all I wanted. Now, they do have more that they have more clamps. It even has this magnifying glass on it, which I don't know if I'm going to really use it or not. But what I'm planning on doing is that 
I have a, a ta little late Lazy Susan, and I'm going to put this on my table, and I'm going to clamp it down so that when I sculpt, see, I would have my head. Now, this is what I'm thinking. I haven't tried it yet. I want to, this is a wax core. See, I would have, now this would be at eye level, okay? And I want to clamp that and then it, have it sitting on my uh, table and so that it is eye level with me. And I am now working with the piece at eye level and it's, I'm not having to hold this at all. I don't want to hold it because I it just gets too warm on me and too tacky. But for three dollars, and they had another one that had a little uh, LED light, and I think it had more clamps. It was like eight ninety nine. But I didn't really want that many. But if I find that the it doesn't work like I want it to for my head then what I'll do is, trust me, I will find other things that I need it for because I have run into that many, many times. Okay, everyone, um, I think that's it, and I will see you again.